of the world. The only solution to, to all of our anguish and problems and let us carry one another's burdens to together and like Jesus said when they came to Jesus and there's a man healing people in the name of Jesus and they said stop he's not one of us and Jesus says why would I tell him to stop nobody can do and perform a sign a miracle or do anything in my name and then come back later and say say, say I was evil or rotten, or did this out of maliciousness, because everybody who's with me is for me, and everybody who gathers together gathers with him, and, and if we're not gathering, then, then we're scattering, we're scattering. Nebuchadnezzar creates a golden image in the book of Daniel and declares a decree that, that if anybody on earth no matter what your language is no matter where you come from no matter where you are if you don't bow down and worship me or, or this golden image and it doesn't like we always should want to think it's an image of a human being or something but it doesn't say that golden image it could have been anything <laughs> Right? And here's this ugly golden image, and Daniel says it was like a giant square, and very ugly. It didn't even look like a man. <laughs> Nothing, just some monstrosity that they had created. In my mind and my thoughts and everything that wars in my body, when, when I see that, I see an image of uh, 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 the Muslim nation, two billion people who three times a day and every time that this voice cries out and, and they do it in Aramaic at every synagogue at the proper time this voice will cry out just like this and the fulfillment uh, of these words through their bodies and that and <coughs> we will get on our knees and bow down to that image no matter where they are on earth at those times. And the bell rings and the lyres play and the, the, the ding-a-ling goes that it's time to worship God and we bow down to one image, the image in Mecca, and we all bow down to that at the exact same time. So so God knows. So so Ebuchadnezzar knows. You worship him. Right? That's one way that we put flesh and blood on it. That's the way I see it. You know? <laughs> And then there's these three Jewish boys, right? And they won't do it. No, we're not going to bow down to, to your image. We're not going to bow down to, to your name. Right? We're not going to bow down to you, Ebuchadnezzar. We, we, we will only worship our, our God. And Nebuchadnezzar is just, when he hears about it, he's extremely furious, extremely angry. And we're going to crank up the furnace, and they built bricks, right? This was Babylonian Empire, and the Babylonian Empire, as we go back, their specialty was brick building. They, they fired their bricks so they were harder than everyone else, and they built buildings and everything in a great city right there in Iraq and it's all gone today but right there that's where all of this was taking place Nebuchadnezzar is furious that these three Jewish boys Meshach, Shadrach and Abednego or you know Meshach, Haz Hananiah and Azariah are, uh, won't do it Right? Furious. Gonna throw you in the fire, cranks up the thing, and even the soldiers that were commanded by him to go and round these guys up, brings them in, and it's what do I hear true? Because yeah, right now there's forgiveness for you. All you gotta do is bow down to, to me, worship me and, and my image that I set up and my gods. And that word right there is going to deliver you from, from pain and suffering. Right? Jesus, Satan comes to Jesus. Well, he's 
suffering and it says look and all the glory of this world and, and the power of it and all the fineness of, of gold and, and you can rule over it and, and I will give it to you freely just bow down and worship me and, and Jesus Christ says Satan you worship the Lord your God. Right? No! <laughs> right? How many times have we heard that? If you follow all these instructions, if you bow down and worship me, if you do all these things, you, you do it, and then you will receive the promotion. You will get the authority. You will have all these gifts and all the gifts are always of this world and Jesus says give away your possessions and get a hold of one of them money bags that that won't wear out and it's filled with the treasures of heaven the treasures of heaven not, not the treasures of this earth but, but of heaven see maybe that's the thing that they were always missing is they were seeking there in Moses' days the treasures of this world. Right? Where, where, where our value come from our receiving free food from our slave work. But, but our value never came from God. Because we didn't believe that God had value for us. They throw them in in, in the Soldiers that threw them in are consumed by the fire. Die in, in the fire. But Nebuchadnezzar sees and leaps to his feet in a complete amazement. What has happened? Did we not throw three men bound, tied up into the fire? And, and everybody says, sure we did. Surely we did. We threw those dirty, rotten scoundrels in the fire. Three of them. Why do I see four people walking around in the fire? Walking in the fire. Right? That they were, saw one likened unto the sons of the gods. Never seen nothing like it before. Couldn't even describe it. Like an angel. Like, like God's living son. In the midst of the fire with the three boys. And when the three boys and they come out of there. Right? He can see they're alive and he screams out, Come out of that furnace! Jesus screams at Lazarus, Come out of that tomb! And they're... Right? Nebuchadnezzar asks them. <laughs> it says to them, Praise be to your God. To your God. For, for only your God can deliver in this way. In fact, you defied my word, my rules, my regulations, my decrees, and everything I had written in stone. You defied it. You didn't even bow down to my image. And yet, your God saved you from out of that fire. And why? Because you wouldn't. Bow down to me, Satan, Jesus, because you wouldn't bow down to me. Right? God has delivered these people. And we all walk and carry the, the same burden. If they're going to be damaged in, in the fire, so will we. And the fire burns all amongst us. Until we recognize, like Ebuchadnezzar, as he has this dream of this giant tree that grows up huge and strong. And all the, the world came to this tree to find shade, shelter, relief, refuge, help, food, clothing. Everybody came to this country. Every nation, every language, every peoples came to that country. 
seeking help and refuge because anybody that King Nebuchadnezzar decreed to die would die. And anybody who he decreed to live would live. And he had the power to do anything he wished to anyone whom he wished. Except for he didn't have the power to defy God. He has this terrible dream and dream is that, that there was messengers sent from heaven. A word, a decree came for, from God's holy realm. He says, cut down that tree. But believe the stump bound in iron and bronze. So, so here we see the descendants of those people. They're still alive. They're still here in the, in the world. Bound in iron and bronze. War. Bound in, in war. I'm going through some spiritual warfare. Bound in, in war. Flesh defying the spirit. And the spirit is so much greater. And Nebuchadnezzar finally comes to a place in his life after God's word was fulfilled in his life where he went through the wilderness. And the rain fell on him and his hair grew out like the hair of a bird. Long hair and big beard. and He had that mind of an animal. In the same way you treat other people, God's going to treat you. And boy, you, you treated the whole world. You treated my people as though they were animals made for a burnt offering. I'm going to treat you like an animal by giving you the mind of an animal. The mind of, of survival of the fittest. Because I am the strongest. Because I, I dominate over the entire pharmaceutical companies. And because I put an intercessor between you and your healer. You and the medicine. I have control over who lives and who dies. And everybody works for me. The pharmaceutical companies Think of it like this, putting flesh and blood on God's word in our reality. Of the spiritual warfare that's going on, not, not just in, in our minds, but in, in reality. My, my war is against my eyes that I see as God delivered us into a place to be devoured. Right? And to, to the people who said that. Have you delivered us here to be devoured, us and our children? Right? Joshua and Caleb ripped their clothes as though somebody had just died. Right? God forbid it. If God says this is our land and God will go before us, then surely God will give this land to us. But, but God said, because you said, I brought you here to devour your children. You shall not see the promised land. But the children whom you said are going to be devoured will enter. Because you didn't trust in him. Believe that, that God is holy. God is love. I, I give to you exactly what would you ask for? You ask for me to, you ask for water, you ask for manna, but do you ask for forgiveness? <laughs> nobody asked for forgiveness because nobody believed they did anything wrong. And the greatest sin that they did was they didn't trust or, or believe God loved them cared for them, cherished them. And so he took the things they said were uncherishable, unlovable, and, and made those his.
every Knesset writes a little story and wants to explain and, and, and first thing he, he says in chapters 4 of the book of Daniel and this is the, that spiritual warfare that that battle and how it, it all comes to an end or the beginning King Ebenezer to all peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied to you. It has seemed good to me to show the signs and wonders that the Most High God has done for me. Right? He says, how great are his signs, how mighty his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And his dominion endures from generation to generation. This is Ebuchadnezzar after he has his dream and, and defies God by saying, Well, wait a minute, wasn't it my hand that created this city? Wasn't it my ruthlessness that brought everything into order? And it was there that God transformed his mind to an animal and, and until he raised up his eyes to heaven and, and, and acknowledged that, that God gives any kingdom he wishes to any person he wishes. And it is God who chooses the most lowly of people to be kings and queens and to rule over the people. Why are we not Congress people, you're not nasty enough. You're, you're not lowly enough. You're not crude enough. You're not disgusting. And God chose you for a greater deed, a greater good, to be a part of His kingdom, an everlasting kingdom that, that cannot be overtaken. And if God delivers you into His hand, what can take you out of his hand? And there's no man on earth, whether they're the greatest ruler of the earth or, or the lowliest of the person, can say to God, what have you done? What have you done? Because God is in control of everything and every aspect of, of everybody's life. Right? Right? That's what Ebuchadnezzar's witness and testimony is, is that God is in control. God's in control. Remember the people of Moses back there in chapters 11? Who is in control? God. And if God so chooses to lead you into a place of starvation, as he did Jesus Christ, who is in control? God. If God leads you, a person whom he has chosen precious in his sight, set apart from all the rest of the world, as he did Jesus Christ, his son, and whom he delighted in, leads you to a place where there's no hope but trusting in God, to a place where you are going to be hurt, destroyed, broken, defiled, violated, abused. God is with you. That's what Jesus Christ comes to bring to this world. God is with you. And he who takes on this great punishment, if he couldn't escape the punishment of God, what makes us think we are? What makes us entitled? What makes us rebel against God's authority? I will be with you every day till the end. And when they're done destroying your body, and they will, 
right? They can't harm you any longer. Because God will be there. Our hope is in the appearing of Jesus Christ. Not our death. But the appearing of Jesus Christ. Right? God is with you. And God is in control. Even when you think he's not in control. God is still in control. And, and you are exactly where God has placed you. Right? Barabbas was exactly where God placed him. There was three people hanging on those crosses, Jesus and the other two, exactly where God placed them. The people gathered gambling over his garments under his feet at the moment he's being crucified. God placed them exactly where they should have been at the time he ordained it. And any one of them had greater control than God. All they had to do was not give him sour wine and gall. And he said, I'm thirsty. The flesh is always warring against the spirit, but all things are working for God's good. All things made and created are working for God's good. And it is nothing more pleasing to God than to say to you, Hear I am. See you.